If you clicked on this video hoping to find some magical tip that you haven't already heard from those hundreds of other videos, how to get straight A's, how I effortlessly get A's, you come to the right place because this is a no BS, far truth, how I always got straight A's, even at one of the hardest engineering schools in the world, even when I had really terrible teachers, even when I was actually doing terrible in my classes and I thought I would fail. This video is unlike any other straight A video you've ever seen before and if by the end you don't think that's true then I'll personally do your homework for you. Hey, it's Amy. I got a 4.0 from Caltech and I was valedictorian in my high school. I got straight A pluses except for I think two A's and that was when taking 11 AP classes. I did three sports and I slept eight hours a day. A lot of you guys ask me how do you get good grades even while doing so many activities so many other things and some Sometimes I'm like, bro, I don't know. I've been thinking long and hard about it. I've been watching other YouTube videos for inspiration. And yeah, I mean, I do agree with most of the things in those generic videos. We do need to understand the material as we go. Maybe we should put our phone away. Like that generic advice is only helpful to some extent. We know deep down inside what we need to do to get straight A's. I've already made several YouTube videos like how to max your GPA, blah, 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 right? So if you follow the tips I give you, you will get A's, but that's a big if. The problem is that mindset and converting the tips. I'm actually no different from you guys. I've had terrible teachers and teachers who I felt like they had a personal vendetta against me, so it gave me bad grades. And I even had a physical disadvantage that I'll reveal at the end of the video in my last story. So what made me get straight A's over the other people who have the same information from the internet? So the thing I'm gonna do differently in this video is make the tips and stories come to life. A little bit of tough love here, but nowadays people are always like, oh, I don't have resources to do this. Maybe I, I didn't go to a good school. Well, my school wasn't that good either. And for the ACT, SAT, I use purely free resources. With that attitude of I didn't have good resources, I should have failed the AP environmental science exam because my teacher sucked. And with that, story one is APES, AP environmental science. So this was supposed to be a throwaway AP class, basically just one that I would take to say I have another AP, but it was supposed to be so easy that it wouldn't really add to my workload. That's what all the upperclassmen told me. They were like, you need another AP? Oh, just take APES. And I was like, okay, cool. I like that. Another weighted GPA, not much work, another five on the exam. Brilliant idea for my junior year. Unfortunately, the first day of class, I felt something was wrong. And you know that first class when they're supposed to talk about the syllabus and how they're planning to help you get that five on the AP exam? Well, he didn't cover any of that. And then when the students asked him, hey, like, how are we preparing? He's like, oh, you know, learn what we can throughout the year, do a few projects. And yeah, that's exactly what he did. In the first month, we were doing this project where I had to film a rock in different nature settings. How does that help me get better or understand environmental science at all? My classmates were chatting with me one day. They're all like, man, we're not taking the AP exam. We're going to fail. We were getting closer and closer to the exam date. And on top of that, we were doing these very meaningless projects, which I was also scoring badly in because the scoring is so objective. So I felt like I wasn't going to get an A, let alone a five on the AP exam. But then one day after coming back from school, I was like, no, like, what do I want? I want an A. I want a five on the exam. That's what I signed up for. And even though I didn't sign up for the teacher, I signed up for a result. I can still make that result happen. It's not like getting an unexpected teacher forces me to get a different result. If I really wanted to get a five, there are ways to do that. So I went onto Amazon. I did some quick research, found I think the Princeton Review AP Environmental Science textbook, and I asked my mom to buy it. Easy to convince the Asian parents to buy something for academics, you know. Once I got the book, the next problem was how am I gonna study this when I already have other schoolwork? I already had my regular classes plus homework, and I still had homework for AP Environmental Science class. Basically every night before going to bed, I took that book from my bedside table, I sat under my covers and I read that for 20 minutes. It felt so strange, you know, starting from page one, reading the intro, 
doing those practice problems, but I did it. And keep in mind that this wasn't every night. I think something that students struggle with is that they think consistency means 100% of the time, but consistency just means most of the time. And for this, maybe it means six out of seven days a week. You need to realize what consistency means to you, because if you set your goal too high, you're not going to do it at all. And that's worse than if you set a more attainable goal and you at least were able to do something better. I continue to do the projects, but I stopped putting as much effort into them just good enough because the grades the teacher gave us were gonna be that kind of grade anyway so why put more effort there that's something i learned as well to get a's you want to figure out where you want to put your effort that provides the most value for you if the textbook isn't helpful and it's not going to be on the test don't force yourself to read it if a project isn't a big percentage of your grade then don't spend a huge chunk of time making everything very pretty the prettiness often is not what gets you the grade anyway with being a straight A student and trying to be a straight A student, sometimes, you know, you feel a little different. I mean, I was the only one in that class who was gonna take the AP environmental science exam. And when I was chatting with my classmates again, they were like, Amy, you're insane. How are you gonna take the exam? I was like, oh, I just bought the book and I'm reading it. And they were like, wow, that's commitment. But they didn't change and that didn't really inspire them to do anything, which I thought was interesting. It's human nature for me to be like, why am I doing this extra work every night before I go to sleep? At the end of the day, after homework, like, yeah, I just want to collapse into my pillow. But it's the knowledge of every single day counts that kept me going. So yeah, it was insane. I read that thick book thick with two C's from cover to cover. I tested myself with the practice problems. I supplemented with YouTube videos when I didn't understand something. My story is inspiration that in your case, especially if you're able to watch this YouTube video, you have a wealth of knowledge right at your fingertips that you gotta tap into. There are no excuses. If you don't have access to a book like I did, it costs money, then you can borrow from a library. There are so many ways to get the results you want. If you want an A, ask, how am I gonna get that a. That's also a tip that I learned from this book and this book. It's called an implementation question. You need to ask yourself, how are you going to get to what you want? And then when there's a habit that you want to do, like for me reading the book, it's filling in the blanks here. At this time, at this location, I will do this. So for me, every night before I go to bed, I'm going to read for 20 minutes. And guess what? Exam time rolled around. I ended up with a five. Yay, that was so exciting. And I think it felt even better than the other fives I had got in on my other AP exams. That five was self-made. I showed to myself that there's no one standing in the way of a certain goal of a five on a test. As far as the actual letter grade, because I started focusing on the more high value things like assignments and even proactively asking for extra credit, I also ended up with an A+. So in this whole story, the biggest thing was I didn't take no for an answer. I didn't accept that maybe I was going to end up with a B. No, I asked, is there a possibility for extra credit? And I pushed for it. And for the AP test too, I was like, no, I'm not going to accept that everyone else is not going to take it. I'm still going to take it because that's what I came here for. And I'm going to make me be able to get a five. All right, at Caltech, there were many hard classes, but I don't think I ever struggled as much and felt so distraught and bad about myself and had my ego crushed so hard as this French cinema class. This was also supposed to be a relatively fun class because we could watch movies in class and then write essays about them. So I was like, whoa, why not? You know, we have these humanities requirements. I have all these chemical engineering classes. Let's take this one. When I got my first essay back, I still remember that pit in my stomach, like my stomach and heart had just dropped to the floor. It was probably one of the worst grades I've ever gotten on an essay, probably the worst grade I've ever gotten on an essay. It was a C plus. Man, I was like, what did I do wrong? In all my classes before, I thought I was a good writer and like I got decent grades in them. I asked the teacher like, like, what can I do? She gave us a rewrite, but she said that that could only bump it up one letter grade. So it would go to a B minus. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. I'll rewrite it because I need to do everything I can, right? That tip there is even if you think it's an insignificant improvement or bump in points or anything, like you gotta take anything you can get because all those little points will add up. Plus the practice of redoing an essay that was bad or redoing a problem that you did wrong, that's just gonna make you more able to get it right in the first place next time. So to do that first rewrite, I set up a meeting with the French cinema professor. She 
talked to me about what was bad about my essay and I like chatted back asking questions. So I thought I had a good understanding once I sent in that rewrite and I got that bump, that B minus. Essay number two, we had three essays total in this class. Once I got the second essay back, it was just like, bro, I suck. This one, I got a B minus or a B. I had already put in so much effort and met with a professor and I thought I understood what she wanted, but here she gives me another bad grade. What was I doing wrong? Like what more could I do? I know I'm talking very passionately about A's, but if you want A's, gotta be passionate about it. <laughs> you gotta care. I uh, met with her again and I did another rewrite. So bumped it up from, you know, if it was a B minus to a B, a B to a B plus. Either way, going into that third essay, I was like, man, I am not ending up with an A and I will just have to accept that. So uh, for the third essay, the final essay, the final countdown. So I asked my friend to show me her essay. In a sudden spark of realization, I was like, bro, you got a good grade. How did you write it? My friend was amazing. You know, that's another good tip. Surround yourself with good friends who are generous, who are not competitive with you. And that's the good thing about Caltech. Everyone was really nice. We're all in this together. You know, we're all in this together. And she emailed me the exact essay. I read it and I was like, dang. This is what the professor wanted. Why didn't she tell me that? Sometimes the professor gives obscure answers or the teacher tells you things that in theory is what she wants, but then when put into practice, it's just so much easier to see an example of what they really want. This essay was just written in a different style, different structure, different approach than I did. I've never written an essay that way, but I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this. I wrote an essay similar to my friends. Well, not like plagiarizing, of course. It's just like following the, you know, approach. I ended up with an A minus overall, but an A plus on that essay. If I didn't get those little points from the rewrites, I would not have gotten an A. The email that said what grade I got, professor was like, this is an outstanding piece of work and the best essay you've ever written. Well, obviously, cause I got a better grade. The lesson there is if something doesn't work out, like you talking to the teacher, try a different way. If you try and go down one path and it shuts down, don't keep trying to jam yourself into that wall. Try going down a different path and see if that works. So my different path was asking my friend. All right, last one, story time. What is my physical disadvantage per se? If you've heard of um, migraines, migraines are some of the worst pain I've ever experienced. How it starts is half of my vision goes blind. It's like blurry, but also like moves around like a flowy water on the side. If I could see your face right now and I had a migraine, I would only be able to see half your face or I could not recognize who you are. Once that aura stops, then your head just starts pounding so hard and I cannot describe that pain. It's not, oops, I forgot to plug this in. I would typically go to the nurse's office in the middle of class whenever it happened and ask to be sent home. So I went back home and then I would just try and sleep for like two to three hours once I was able to function as a person again. So as you can imagine, that really made getting good grades hard sometimes because I would miss class and then that would take time away from being able to do the amount of schoolwork I had. So one specific story, it was a day of my AP physics exam. One hour before it was going to start, I suddenly felt my hand go numb. I put my hand out, blurry. I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Right now, I get a migraine. And I was debating like, man, should I skip this one and then do the makeup exam. But then if I take the makeup exam, that would be the same day as my other makeup exam. So very like stressed, I called my parents. I was like, oh, what should I do? My mom's like, it's okay, try your best. I said with conviction, I'm still gonna take it. I can do it. So I went to the exam, my head's still hurting. I think my vision's still not so good. I was like, oh, how am I gonna even read the numbers on the page? I took it and throughout the exam, my head got a little better once I finished. I was like, oh my gosh, one of the hardest experiences of my life. And I went home and crashed. The result was I miraculously, surprisingly still ended up with a five. The lesson here is I prepared so much more. I think I made sure to really understand how each problem, how each formula, how the math worked such that almost like over preparing for that five, where I think it's just a 60% or higher to get a five or something like that. So even when I was not in my best state, a horrible state actually, I was still able to meet that threshold because 
I over prepared, right? If you think you have disadvantages or you think like something could come up, you never want to procrastinate. Like you always want to kind of give yourself insurance to make it okay in whatever situation suddenly happens. Life is hard and we get dealt these different cards in life, but it's all about how you play your hand. And you want to remember and realize that everyone has difficulties in their lives, maybe to different levels, but you can't just take someone at face value and be like, wow, they get A's all the time. It must be easy for them. That's the first mistake. If you think it's easy for someone to get A's, it's going to be hard for you to get A's because you're like studying and then you get a B and you're like, why is this hard for me? And so you try less or you don't think of how to actually get that A. Because I had migraines, in a way, I take that as a strength where I would make sure to do those good habits of a straight A student, but even more consistently and to do my homework even more efficiently and ahead of time, just in case something happens. Procrastination was not an option for me. We see in all those basic general advice, don't procrastinate, don't cram the night before an exam. This third story is an example of applying that and why you want to do that. So that's kind of the purpose I wanted to show today. Like this video might not have been do one, two, three, four, all these tips, you know, that you see in those other video forms formats, but it's how I applied these in a way even when I felt pretty hopeless, pretty helpless, and um, honestly pretty negative about the results that I could have. But there's only one thing you can do regardless of if you think you can get it or not, and it's to try. You just want to try, and it helps to believe that by trying, you're more likely to get the result you want. People say all the time that, oh, you're just book smart, academic, you know, that's not how the real world works, but I think that the way I approach to getting straight A's is a way of how I can do well in the real world as well. These kinds of mindsets, discipline, that work ethic, and most of all, no excuses taking accountability and having self-efficacy that, you know, I'm in control of many things. So I'm going to do well in what I can control. Not making excuses becomes a habit. Think about all the things that are already a habit. Brush your teeth, take notes, you do your homework, you show up. You show up for yourself. If you don't show up for yourself, no one's gonna show up for you. No one's gonna save you and give you straight A's and no video is going to give you straight A's unless you take that mindset. Just like why I think this video is probably more valuable than the other general advice you see out there. It brings all the tips you already know to life. If you make excuses in the little things, then you're gonna make excuses in the big things too. Yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to let me know what you think in the comments and give me a like if you like this format of video. Sometimes I get pretty paralyzed per se to make a video. I have a list of like probably over a thousand ideas, no joke, but it's really hard for me to get through them because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist to get the intro exactly right, to you know say everything perfectly. But this video, I improvised a a little more hopefully it sounded more natural which i actually liked so let me know if you like that too and i'm hoping that i can do more videos like this where i'm talking to you a little bit more candidly and therefore get more of my ideas out because i do have a lot to share and a lot of stories like this anyway if you want to know healthy habits i have for being able to do it all being healthy being strong getting good grades well check out this video thank you for watching peace